Okay, real quick, I'm gonna go over the pieces that we're using for the fundamentals tote. And I am going to be doing the one with the divided pocket, divided zipper pocket, so I'll have a few extra pieces. Um, I've also gone ahead and put some of my hardware on already, but I have left one of everything except for my bag tag to do together so that you guys can see. Um, so you're gonna have two main body exteriors. And you'll have two lining interior pieces. And I am going to be doing a magnetic snap. And there are some lines that you'll want to be drawing on all of your main pieces. So make sure you do those. And I have one lining piece for a slip pocket. Two pieces for my zipper pocket and then four pieces for my center divider. And these are gonna be getting zippers, so I already put some double-sided tape on there too. Then I'm gonna be using two number five zippers. We will have four of these rectangle rings, but as you saw, I already installed three of them. And these are three quarter inch, as well as four three quarter inch connectors. But again, I installed four or three of them already. You're gonna have two zipper tabs, one slip pocket trim, and I put some double-sided tape on the back, and one zipper overlay, again with some double-sided tape on the back. You'll need some number five zipper tape, and then I have my three-quarter inch straps. Um, I did already make these. They're just basic straps, nothing special. I punched the holes, and I did install my strap ends. So we'll put those on together at the end, and then you'll also need some rivets to attach these straps and a few other things. Okay, so now we're going to work on the hidden strap connector. And I'll show you on the back how we did that. So this, I'm going to be drawing this shape and I'm going to center it right at the lines here. And this is all in the pattern. It tells you exactly where to place your lines if you want to do hidden connectors. So I'm gonna start at this cross section. So I drew a three quarter inch line centered, and then I drew a half inch line centered, and then I connected those two lines, and then I cut out the sides and the top. Don't cut out the bottom. Don't cut the whole shape. Then we're gonna flip it over. And I'm gonna take my strap connector right side up and smoosh it in there. And it should definitely be a tight fit. See how there's no wiggle room really on the side? That's what you want. And then I'm gonna bring it over. Okay, then I'm gonna bring it over to my machine and I am going to stitch right along this line here staying within the strap connector. So don't don't go like a little bit outside here or a little bit outside here. It's important that you stay on the connector and make sure that your connector is as straight as possible. Then we're gonna flip this up. So on the front side, you're gonna take your D-ring or rectangle ring and place that in. Then you're going to tuck this part through the back, pull snug, and flip everything back over. Okay, now everything's going to be facing this way. Here are your two pieces. Here's your line. Now you're going to stitch again on this little trapezoidal piece. St super important that you stay on there. Also super important that you don't hit your metal hardware. Ask me how I know. I broke my first ever industrial needle today, hitting my hardware. All right, go ahead and trim all these. You can be done if you want at this point. Because all you'll do is flip these connectors up now, but I do want there to be a row of stitching on the front um, as well, just for some added security. I do not back stitch. I will pull my threads through and I try, I say try, to stay with in the strap here. So I leave long tails and I'm gonna do five stitches, I think. Okay, once you have your stitches, 
go ahead and pull the loops to the back. And I'm just gonna tie it off. And then I'm also just going to duct tape it down a little bit. I changed my mind, I'm gonna melt them. All right, next you're going to take your um, lining panel that you marked for the zipper in the instructions, and you're going to center as best you can and align the zipper overlay with the line you drew. Okay, and then I'm gonna go ahead and stitch around the outside portion only. Now I'm going to carefully trim away the lining fabric from here. So all I'm gonna do is make a small slit and then cut this out. Very carefully, you don't wanna cut your overlay. And that's what you should have right now. So I'm gonna set this to the side and then I'm gonna grab my zipper tape, a zipper pull, and my two zipper lining panels. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and install my pull and I'm gonna leave it really, really close to the edge. So I'm gonna leave it just like this. And I put some eighth inch wide double-sided tape on both of my pieces for lining fabric. And then I'm gonna go ahead and line up my zipper tape and stitch this down at a quarter inch. And then I flip it over and I pull these away and I top stitch this seam. And then normally I do it from the other side. I think I'm gonna try it from this side this time because this is the side you're gonna see the stitches for. And this is some um, Theratex from Fabric Therapy. So it's, it's on the thinner side, um, which means my stitches end up looking a little wonky sometimes on the bottom. That's fine. It's worth it. It's beautiful. Okay. See how it's a little wavy in here? That's just because it's a really thin material. No big deal. All right. Then grab your other piece. Line up the one edge and repeat that process. Now you're gonna grab your lining piece. I forgot, I was supposed to cut enough to uncover the double-sided tape is what I meant to say, and do. So I'm gonna cut back a little bit more here on the long edges and just expose the double-sided tape so I can attach the zipper nice, nice. Okay, peel back the paper on the double-sided tape. And with your zipper still off to the side, do your best to center the panel over your zipper. And now we're going to stitch this one down on the inside. So for this, it's important that you start at the edge where your zipper is if you're doing it this way. 
so that you can pull your zipper in. So I'm leaving um, about an inch and a half or so unstitched. And once we come around the other side, I'll pull the zipper pull through. Okay, I'm gonna stop real quick, pull the zipper through and push it all the way to the beginning. And if you have an extra chunky zipper, this might not be the best idea. So just keep that in mind. And then finish closing up the zipper. Oh, my stitches are crooked. Holy smokes. It's fine, everything's fine. And then you can go ahead and cut off the extra zipper tape. And then you can go ahead and fold this down. And you're going to want to stitch it closed. Back stitching well over the teeth. And there is, for me, going to be a discrepancy in the length. That's okay. I'll just trim it down. Okay, so now I'm just going to trim this down. And there you have one lining panel. And it's got this super cute little pop of color in here. Trim that thread. All right, next you're going to grab your slip pocket and you're going to fold it in half, right sides together, matching together the short edges, sorry. You're gonna stitch the long ones together. So you're gonna be stitching down here. And you'll stitch that closed with a quarter inch seam allowance on both sides. And then I'm going to very carefully, without cutting your stitches, trim the corners here. And that's just going to help it turn a little and the, the corners poke out a little better. Then you're going to line everything up on the open side and baste that shut. I'm not one to iron. If you are, by all means, go ahead and iron your pocket. All right, go ahead and get your slip pocket trim piece. I cut mine a little longer. I like to trim it down when I'm done. So I'll place your pocket on. And then we're gonna fold it over. All right, and then I'm gonna top stitch along the bottom and the top. Or you could do just the top. Well, no, not just the top. You could do just the bottom. I mean, you could technically do just the top, but probably not the best idea. I'm gonna trim it up real quick. Now you'll go ahead and grab your other lining panel piece and center this at the line that we drew in the prop. And then go ahead and stitch it down at an eighth from the edge, eighth of an inch. To divide my pocket in half. So I'm just going to use the center line and later I'll put a rivet in. Oh geez, I hope that's straight.
It is. Yay. Okay. So in a little bit, I'll put a rivet right here. Um, next, I'm going to work on the divided pocket though. Okay, so now we're going to work on the center divider. So I have my zipper tabs, my zipper pull, a piece of zipper tape cut to the length in the pattern, and then my four zipper um, divider panels. So first I'm gonna put my zipper on and then these zipper tabs real quick. And then I'm gonna go ahead and stitch on my zipper tabs. So I'm gonna place them right side down and stitch them on with a quarter inch seam allowance. And then I'm gonna go ahead and pull them back and top stitch along the fold. Okay, so this is what you should have. I'm gonna go ahead and fold it in half, matching up the seams. And I'm just gonna mark the halfway point on the tape within the seam allowance. Don't snip your tape. I've done it, it doesn't go well. I'm just gonna mark it with a pen. Staying inside the seam allowance. All right, then you're going to go ahead and grab one of your panels for the divider. I've put some double-sided tape on there um, just to make installing the zipper easier. I cut my zipper tabs pretty long because the piece, <laughs> piece fell behind my desk and I couldn't get it anymore. So mine are longer, yours may not be, or they, they might be, I'm not sure. Um, but either way, I'm gonna center my zipper face down. And then you can either base this on or you can take another one of your panels and place it right side down on top of here. Um, I'm using the same material for the inside and the outside of my um, divider panel. If yours are different, the first piece that I put down is going to be the one that faces out into the bag. And this one is gonna be the lining of the divider. So keep that in mind when you're placing them together. Now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna stitch this on at a quarter inch seam allowance. Making sure I move my zipper out of the way when I get to it, so it's right about here. All right, then we're going to go ahead and pull everything out. I'm just going to match up the bottoms, like the bottom corners and stuff, so I can pull everything nice and tight, but don't like, not too tight. And then I'm gonna top stitch this. And I am going through the exterior and the lining. If you wanna just go through the exterior, you can. You don't have to do both. I just like to do both. Okay, then we're gonna go ahead and repeat all of those steps for the other side.
Okay, now you should have something like this. You can trim your tabs down if you want now. I'm, I'm just going to wait so I don't end up falling short because that happens sometimes to me. So once they're all sewn together, I'll, I'll trim down any extra zipper tab. So next you're going to take this exterior panel and move it down here. Match everything up. So I did snip centers, so that's going to be super easy. All right, so you should have this. I'm going to flip it over. You're going to have a little bit of a bump. Just move that up to the top. And do the same thing with this other piece. Bring it right back down, lining everything up right sides together. So all four pieces are lined up as best you can. Okay. Next, you're going to make some marks on the corner. So there is a measurement in the pattern. You're going to measure up and over to the uh, measurements that are in the pattern. And then you're going to connect the lines with a diagonal. And do that on both sides. And then we are going to stitch right along those lines that we just drew. And then I'm going to trim this down, the seam allowance, to between a quarter and an eighth of an inch. I think she says an eighth of an inch in the instructions, so, you know, get pretty close. But don't get so close that your stitches are going to be compromised. Then you can unclip, and you can reach in here and find your zipper, nice big pocket and turn everything right sides out. Maybe, oh, there we go. So right now, all that should be sewn together is the bottom corners here. Come up here, and I'm going to kind of smush everything together and make it lay flat. You can press it too if your material is something that can be pressed, as usual. Mine is not. Someday I might use something that can be pressed. All right, so now we are going to close up the sides. So the one thing you want to make sure of, uh, you can trim your zipper tabs now if you want. But I'm not going to. Um, you're matching up these seams here on the inside. So I'm going to stitch this all closed. I'm just going to baste it closed at an eighth of an inch. And I'm just going to make sure I'm pulling... So everything's nice and straight and taut all the way down. Uh oh, did I lose bobbin chicken? Oh, I won. Hey, yo. Sort of, kind of, not really. I'm gonna hit those last couple stitches one more time. Now I'm going to trim my zipper tab. And go ahead and repeat for the other side. And then to finish it off, I'm going to close up my bottom as well. Just stitching it again with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Mm -hmm. All right, once you have this all basted together, you're going to grab your panel. Um, I'm gonna do it with the panel that has the zipper pocket on it, only because I wanna make sure my zippers are going in the same direction. You can choose whichever one. Um, and then you're going to make a mark here up a certain measurement that is given in the pattern on both sides. So make that mark. All right, once you have these lines drawn, you're going to line up your pocket divider and center it. It should, should fit 
Perfect, it does. Okay. So just go ahead and clip that together if you want. And we're just basting the bottom portion together right now. All right, right now that's what you should have. Then I'm gonna grab my other lining panel piece. I'm gonna zoom you out a little so you can see a little better. And I'm going to place these right sides together. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna stitch these down. And this time I'm gonna use a half inch seam allowance. Oh, I forgot I have magnets up there. Mm -hmm. So stitch this with a half inch seam allowance from side to side. I'm gonna make sure I backstitch well over the bump for the um, divider panel. So half an inch. So now this is what you should be looking at. These zippers are both facing the same direction and everything is attached nice, nice. So now you have these lines that you drew over here. You're going to take your divider pocket and you're going to match the corner of it up with the line that you drew. So see, and clip that in place. and stitch that down. I'm gonna just baste it for the moment at an eighth of an inch. Okay, we're gonna turn it around and do the same thing on the other side. I wanna start my stitching from the bottom on both sides um, for a couple of reasons. One, because my material is slippery and I know it's gonna shift, um, but that being said, at least it'll shift in the same direction for both sides. So at the end of the day, my divider pocket will be even, hopefully. All right, real quick before I go any further, my chalk lines are kind of fading and I want to, shoot, my chalk lines aren't kind of fading. They are fading. They are faded. I'm going to have to redraw my, my lines. Okay, I redrew my lines. If your lines are fading like mine, redraw them before you attach the divider because that made this one a little more challenging to draw just because you know things are wonky now hopefully I did an okay-ish job all right now we are going to stitch together the two sides so I'm gonna start by matching up my corner edges and we're going to start with a half an inch seam allowance. And in the last inch, we're going to reduce it to 3 8 inch seam allowance. So starting with half inch, and then in the last inch of the lining, we're going to change to 3 8 I'm gonna backstitch at the bulky seam for the divider. And here I'm going to start reducing my seam allowance. All right, go ahead and repeat all of that with the other side. Once you have those sides stitched together, we're gonna to go ahead and work on the corners. So go ahead and butterfly these corners, clip, 
and then stitch together at a half inch seam allowance. And do that on both sides. All right, after that, I'm gonna go ahead and trim down all my seams to between a quarter, about a quarter inch. Don't go too short. And when you do your side seams, do not trim the top inch here. Leave that. You'll need that for um, final assembly. Sorry. So then this is what the inside will be with the divider. I'm going to go ahead and Apparently snap my snap clothes. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and put some double-sided tape here right along my line and fold my lining down. Um, at the side seams, I'm going to be butterflying them open. All right, then I'm going to remove the paper backing from my double-sided tape. And I'm gonna fold down and meet the line that I drew. Okay, so that's what you'll have. I am gonna just toss some clips on here to make sure it doesn't come unstuck while I'm working on my exterior. All right, now we're going to work on our exterior. So I have my exterior panels and I'm gonna place them right sides together and match up the edges at the bottom. And I will go ahead and clip that all together. And this will be sewn with a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Um, and then we'll be butterflying it, I believe. So I'll only do one row of stitching. Normally on the bottom of a bag, I would do two, unless we're butterflying the seam. Once you have that seam, you're going to butterfly it open and you're going to stitch down either side of the seam allowance, making sure that your um, seams are split and butterflied open. And I just keep my hand under here to keep everything opened underneath because you can't see it. And I want to make sure I catch the seam. around and make sure that the other side still stays down and I'm going to come right back down the other side of the seam and I'm doing the same thing I have my hand up under here just making sure the vinyl stays flat and gets caught in my stitching So see, you should have this on the back. And this will be the front. Now I'm gonna go ahead and match the top. We're not gonna sew across the top, but I'm gonna just match up the top real quick. And then we're gonna sew the sides together at 3 8 inch seam allowance again. All right, so now I'm going to stitch all the way down. Um, I'm gonna start at the top on both panels. So stitch all the way down at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. All 
All right, I'm gonna flip it over and start from the top again, just so if anything shifts, it shifts in the same direction, but hopefully nothing shifts. How about that? Three eighths inch again. Now we're gonna box the corners. So one side is already butterflied for the base. So we're gonna go ahead and butterfly the side to match and clip. And then we're going to stitch this at 3 8 inch seam allowance. And it should be flat. You shouldn't have a bow or anything. If you do, you need to go further down and just kind of pull the fabric out a little bit more. Um, you should be able to achieve a great box with this pattern. It's pretty perfect. Okay, so 3 8 inch. Oh, I forgot to move the camera for you. I'll show you the other side then. I'm going to repeat it with the other side. All right, at this point, I am going to place my double-sided tape right at my one inch mark for the fold, just like I did for my lining. Um, and I'll do that off camera. And then we're just going to put them together and we're done. All right, so I have my exterior turned right side out and my edges folded down. And I have my lining turned wrong side out. I am going to take my lining and I personally like my zipper to be on the back side. So I'm going to just place it inside. Whoa, sorry. Stuff everything in there. And I'm gonna go around and I'm gonna start lining up the centers. See these, I'm gonna mark up my center marks. Try not to let it move. And then I put a clip on either side. All right, then next I'm going to line up the edges or the, uh, the side seams here. So I'm gonna line these up. And this is going to be a thick spot, so um, just be careful if your machine doesn't do thick spots well. Try not to leave this clipped for too long because, see, I just clipped it and it's got marks on it already. And then you're going to just work in the rest of the bag, which honestly it's no work because it fits pretty much perfectly. So that's it. This is what you should be working with right now. I am going to stitch all the way around. Um, I'm not sure if I'm gonna do a quarter inch or an eighth of an inch, probably a quarter of an inch. I'm gonna do it on my other machine though, my cylinder arm, so that I get a beautiful finish. So I'll meet you over there. Okay, here we go. Sorry, my hand is all in here. There's no good way to get this angle on this machine. But other than that, the machine's perfect. All right, let's 
try that angle instead. I have a bubble at the end. Right, let's see. Right, I'm leaving these long and I'm gonna tie them off quick. Okay, so I buried one set of threads and I'm gonna show you how I do it. I'm sure there's a million one better ways to do it, but this is how I do it. So I tied them both off into a knot and then what I'm going to do is go just through the lining. Don't go through your exterior. Which is tough because I had double-sided tape in here. Then you're gonna come back out through the lining, pull everything through. Then you're gonna pull it real snug. Don't cut your lining, trim it out and then shake it out. There. Okay. So here is my bag. All that's left is to put my handles on. Couple takeaways. Um, I think that this, I should have used like an interfaced material for one, at least one portion of it because it's a little flimsy. Um, it's not bad, but I didn't read the pattern. Well, I read the pattern, but I didn't follow the pattern instructions and interface it. My bad. So, but I love it with the snap here. And then I'll go ahead and heat it up a little bit to help it get rid of some wrinkles, etc. So I'll put my straps on. When I'm doing that, I wanna go ahead and decide if I want my folded edge facing in or if I want it facing out. And I'm gonna go with this. I'm gonna go with facing out. I'm also going to get longer rivets because there's no way these nine millimeters are gonna be long enough. These are 12 millimeters. So I'm gonna bring them down. I already have my holes punched. I'm gonna go through the front and then the back. And if you have strap ends, make sure your pretty side is facing out. Make sure your strap isn't twisted. Whoa. Uh oh, there it is. Now make sure you put the other strap on the right, well, not right, there's not a right or a wrong way, but on the same way. Or if that doesn't bother you, you do you. It bothers me though, so I try to be consistent with them. Okay. And there we have it. So I will press these rivets and set them. 
And that is our fundamentals tote with a magnetic snap and a center divider pocket. Beautiful. Thank you so much to the designer for allowing us to do this marathon with your beautiful pattern today. Uh, make sure you check out all of the amazing and talented YouTubers before and after my video. If you found this video helpful, please go ahead and give it a like, and I'll see you in the next one.